Today, I kind of want to delve into cost optimized design, trying to make something as cheaply as possible without sacrificing design requirement. Now, what we have here is one of my many uh, projects from necessity, I guess. I'm uh, trying to, I'm still working on the power bank project. Uh, one of the things I really like to investigate is uh, whether I can make a single port USB type C power bank. However, the clever person that I am, uh, I do not own anything USB-C. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what I'm doing in this uh, field, but yeah, whatever. I, I really like uh, power meters. I really like batteries. I really like everything that has to do with it. And a USB-C really seems to be the way to go. So uh, I started working on a large battery bank uh, that uses USB type C for input and output. I want to be able to measure its input and output, power, voltage, efficiency, all those kinds of things. And uh, I do have a general purpose uh, power meter setup, but really I just want something convenient, something that plugs in. And that's this. So here, uh, this has a USB type C uh, plug or socket on one end and then the plug on the other end and a little display that shows me in order the exact voltage the current and the power which is obviously just voltage times current this is the difference between the maximum and minimum voltage within the last 10 seconds i think i programmed um, the amp hour amp hours that have gone through, so the, the charge and the energy that has gone through in what hours. Really, what I was uh, looking for is something that I can churn out in decent numbers uh, and that I can just plug into stuff or package with products or something that is clearly made for like a larger market than what I usually do. Like usually I uh, design stuff for uh, 10 off, 100 off, uh, those kinds of quantities. Um, this has to be cost optimized and still make a profit when I sell a thousand. But of course it doesn't end there. Uh, I also want it to be super accurate. Uh, so I want to have a resolution in the uh, hundreds of microvolts slash hundreds of microamps. And I want the actual measurement precision to also be well within a milliamp and uh, well within 10 millivolts. That is surprisingly hard to achieve if you want to like majorly cost optimized because um, let's just go to the, the cost thing right away. Let's go to here. This is my USB 3.0 Nano Hub. This is just a PCB with some components on it. And this is very easy to cost and it's probably going to be very cheap because integrated circuits, even fairly complicated ones like a USB 3.0 Hub, um, they, they come pretty cheap there's a lot of competition here um, you can cost optimize this entire thing fairly well the problem comes when you for instance want to uh, include as a rule of thumb connectors and displays so here we go this is all the uh, graphic LCD displays that Farnell has and the very cheapest one is uh, this one and not sure if you can read it but it's six euros and 18 cents each and even if you buy 50 so my my typical uh, order volume uh, by the way they only have 203 in stock uh, if you buy 50 it's uh, still over five euros and that might not seem like much but five euros is uh, the vast majority of a uh, budget of a low low cost product. So if we, for instance, like in a typical costing estimate, say you want to design a $20 product. So product price uh, 20. The actual bomb cost, so the uh, bill of materials, all the components together cannot be 19 euros. You do have you have a VAT, which is 20%. So that would be about uh, 4 euros. They need to reserve about 10% of your price for uh, failures in the field. 
you kind of want to make a profit, right? You have put some effort into your product. So for instance, let's say I put about 10 hours uh, into a project and I think I should make about 45 euros per hour. Then my actual hours uh, are about 450 euros. Uh, so that's your subtotal. And if the number of products is like 100 over the lifetime, then you really need to have a margin of about four and a half euros or four and a half dollars um, in the end. So your uh, net margin, generally speaking, uh, you put this at about 20 to 40 percent. Depends a lot on your product. If you ex expect to sell like a thousand of something, uh, you can lower your net margins. But uh, in my case, I uh, kind of want to kind of want to be in the uh, four or five dollar range with this product. So all of this is just the the macroeconomics of the product. So your uh, bomb and assembly can be no more than 10 euros or dollars. And this is very, very typical. So the, uh, the bomb cost, the, the actual total costs to the manufacturer of a product are generally about half or slightly less. So uh, a rule of thumb in a commercial setting is about your product price divided by two and a half. So in that case it would be the bomb and assembly cost should be about eight ish uh, euros. So if we are then looking at uh, the prices of a display and mind you, this is not a, a computer interfacing uh, device. I just want a, a convenient thing that I plug in that shows me the power with very high precision and what I know is good. It has to have a display of some kind and there is so much information to show. I just showed you, even if you would uh, make it simpler and for instance think, well, maybe I can get away with like a seven segment display. You still need quite a lot of digits if you want, in my case, a five digit voltage and five digit current display, then maybe you could rotate through them or something, but I mean, that's not very convenient. And I, I do kind of want like a, a, at a glance display. So a graphical display is almost indispensable and five or six euros, uh, that would just not work. The rest of the uh, components are going to be too expensive. So uh, for the first time in a very long time, I uh, decided to do this. Um, look at AliExpress slash eBay. And I decided to go for uh, cheapo Chinese made uh, little displays. Now you can immediately see the giant advantage. So this is $26.54 for 10 pieces. Uh, this is in Dutch for some reason. Never mind. Um, so that's only $2.65 a piece, so about two and a half euros or two euros. And that means that uh, in our earlier calculation, we still have about seven and a half euros left. Here is uh, my, my go-to pretty much microcontroller. It's an ATX Mega 16 C4. This is a, an inferior microcontroller to uh, the actual one I put on, but often in design, it doesn't matter uh, that much what microcontroller you use. It matters which tool chain you use. So uh, I am very much a fan of Atmel Studio. This is the uh, programming environment that I use. And Atmel Studio, uh, of course, only works with Atmel, now microchip, microcontrollers. And these microcontrollers, uh, they're, they're, they're kind of expensive. The, the whole 
Arduino environment mostly runs on Atmel. Uh, so they are very popular. Uh, people are going to buy them anyway, so they price them kind of high, even though it's just an 8-bit microcontroller. And you can see here they are about uh, 3 euros in uh, small quantities. Well, even in large quantities, they're 250. Now, fortunately, uh, Atmel came out with the uh, ATSEM D09 series, which is a Cortex-M0, a 32-bit uh, microcontroller running at much higher speeds, uh, still the same program memory. And these, actually, they, they have better peripherals. They're better in every way, but, of course, uh, it's a little bit harder to program if you are not used to it. And uh, my own experience with 32-bit uh, microcontrollers, especially uh, Cortex-M3, is uh, that the IDEs that manufacturers supply, none of them are as good as Apple Studio. So I uh, really wanted to stay with uh, Apple, and fortunately, they do have this better chip, which is only about a euro, and in large quantities, it's like 80 cents. So uh, this is just a bargain. Uh, I had to try it out, and eventually uh, it did work out. Now, of course, uh, we uh, saved a lot of money on the display, and we saved a lot of money on the microcontroller, and those two things together already would have been more than I could bear if I wanted to sell this thing for 20 euros. Uh, but uh, that's not everything. Uh, you need more than just a microcontroller and a display. Uh, you also need, for instance, the connectors. So here's the, uh, the entire schematic. Uh, you can download it. Uh, I will put links in the description. Uh, the input and output connectors are also about a dollar each. And then, of course, uh, in order to measure current, you uh, put it through a current shunt resistor. So this is a resistor that is only about 5 milliohms. And because it has to be bidirectional, that is fairly hard to do without some kind of external help. So there are these little uh, current shunt amplifiers that you can bias. Of course, I also want to have a very accurate display. So uh, microcontroller itself has a built-in voltage reference, but it's not very good. So uh, I put in a separate voltage reference. So this, this adds another couple tens of cents. And, well, it needs a voltage regulator. That's the, uh, the, the part here. It's just a very simple LDO. And lastly, it needs to measure voltage. So it has some uh, voltage dividers. Uh, don't worry too much about this. Um, yeah, so these two things are about a dollar each. This is about a dollar. And then lots of little things that are like 10, 20 cents. What do you end up with? Well, the fun thing is I can show you. So here is a part of my website and I use TinyCAD as an EDA. And TinyCAD is, is a very old, uh, I think defunct, I don't think anybody is working on it anymore, uh, IDE. But the awesome thing is that its file format is in XML. So it's very easy with JavaScript to um, get information out of it. So I built a little script, it's on my website. Uh, you can drop the TinyCAD design file in and it automatically scans the file for uh, foreign L part numbers. Those are these numbers in, let me just magnify this. So each uh, part gets its own color and you have like a purchasing link. So this goes directly to Farnell. So I can look at, oh, well, uh, that's this component. Uh, it has the uh, price staggers, has the required quantity, the amount of stock, etc. And this uh, calculates for you the total price of an order. So I can, I can generate orders, for instance, if I want a, to build a hundred of these, then it uh, comes out at 575 euros. So that's five euros and 75 cents a piece in components. And then here you can uh, see like as a graph, how the prices 
uh, scale. So you can see if I just build one, it's very expensive. And I build two, it gets much cheaper already. And five gets much cheaper again. And then it gets all the way to 10,000 units where it's only uh, like a, a couple of euros. Hmm. I'm interested. Ooh, that's one too much. Uh, yeah, four euros and 55 cents. Cool. So this is uh, what I use to do uh, like analysis of how many units I want to make and where the, where the good price breaks are. So uh, here you see that some components just don't really go down in price and others do. So we have five euros and 75 cents if I make a hundred and we have the two dollars and 65 cents for the display. And of course, we have the PCB itself, which also has to be made. It's a four layer PCB. Uh, and that's also about like a dollar. So altogether, it seems like we can actually make this for less than 10 euros. Of course, assembly uh, would be done on my pick and place machine. So it's essentially free, quote unquote free. It just costs a little bit of time. So I have successfully optimized this five digit, very high accuracy, uh, bi-directional USB type C power meter, which by the way, does like zero to 20 volts and zero to five amps, no problem. Optimize it down to something I can sell for 20 euros. Actual measurements with and to have like a PCV. Of course, there are already power meters like this plug in power meters for USB. And there's even uh, one that has been fairly recently announced for USB type C. It's the first one, I think. And they do exist, but they do not have specified accuracy. And that is what you get in a device like this. So this is a uh, flip multimeter. And this is what is known as a 50,000 count display. So what this means is that if I put it in high res mode, there are five digits here on the display and the, the measurement accuracy, so the, the amount of digits that it's off by is probably only one of these last digits. So every digit is significant. Every digit contains real information about the measurement. And in my little meter here, I wanted the same thing. I wanted five significant digits. And you can see that here. For instance, the voltage display, it's 5.31. Well, it's all over the place. Let me just plug it into my computer, which is a little bit more stable. That's about what you expect. Every single digit contains actual information about the measurement. So it's not all over the place. Like all these digits contribute to the actual measurement accurate. Now, why am I harping on about the number of digits? Well, uh, little microcontrollers, and obviously this runs on a microcontroller, they have analog to digital converters. And I am converting something analog, namely the voltage and the current, to a digital value. And these A, a to D converters, these ADCs, they have a specified bit depth. So in the case of the microcontroller that's on here, it has a 12 bit A to D converter. And 12 bits means that it outputs a number between zero and 4,095. And that's just four digits. <laughs> so if you want to get more than those four digits, in my case, five digits, what you have to do is oversample. So fortunately, this uh, microcontroller has a very fast a ADC. Well, in microcontroller terms, it's not very fast, but it is uh, plenty fast enough for us. Uh, namely, it has a 350 kilo samples per second ADC. So it can take 350,000 samples per second. And what you can do is just add them all together, divide them by the number of samples you took, and then suddenly you have a much more accurate uh, measurement value and you can actually get that number of digits and uh, here on screen I'm putting the formula for the uh, actual amount of digits you get 
with a certain amount of oversampling. It's a little bit uh, convoluted, but uh, what it boils down to is that if you want one extra bit of accuracy, so if you want to 13 bits instead of 12, you have to oversample by a factor of four. So that means if you want to have six extra bits, you have to oversample by four to the power of six, which is 4,096 times. And that means that your 350 kilo samples per second ADC suddenly uh, can only do 350,000 divided by 4,096. So that's about 85 samples per second. But wait, it gets worse. The microcontroller that I used isn't actually 12 bits. So uh, what I'm usually used to is uh, this microcontroller that I use for almost everything. Uh, it's an Atmel or now microchip uh, AVRX Mega, uh, very similar to the microcontrollers used in Arduinos. And these have a 12 bit A to D converter, which is very close to 12 bits if you uh, use it correctly. Uh, unfortunately, these chips are about four euros a piece. And I really had to get a cheaper chip. So on the actual power meter, there is an Atmel SEM Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller. And that microcontroller has a, an ADC with an effective number of bits, which means uh, it does produce 12-bit output, but there are so many little errors in the ADC that the actual resolution that you get out of it, the actual accuracy is uh, more in the order of 10.5 or 10.1 bits. So we do have to do a whole lot more uh, oversampling. And that is eventually what led to this. So this uh, update rate that you can see is about two and a half times per second. And uh, that is oversampling the voltage and the current uh, by a factor of 32,768. So two to the power of 15 times I am oversampling and decimating. And then still, this actually does yield me 18 effective bits and that's enough to make a five digit display. And what you see here, the, uh, so the, for instance, the amps, they're going between zero, one and two. Usually in a, if you have a true five digit multimeter, for instance, uh, you would expect this last digit to only fluctuate by one. So zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, for instance, or one, two, one, two, one, two. And here you see it actually going back and forth by about four, uh, plus or minus four at the most. But after a lot of debugging and a lot of cursing, because I was really hoping for this to be better accuracy, found out that um, this is another thing. <laughs> And here you really run into the limitations of uh, a cost optimized design. So what's happening here is uh, this side is now connected and this is a bi-directional power meter. So if the uh, power goes from right to left, the little arrow is to the left. And if it goes from left to right, it works just as well. And the arrow is to the right. Now what happened here is um, there is a little current shunt behind this display. And that current shunt, uh, if it is connected in this configuration, so nothing is connected on this side and something is connected to this side, then the input power comes through the shunt resistor and then goes into the actual uh, measurement circuit itself. And that means that the power consumption of the meter itself, which it draws from the USB line, is also counted in the current measurement. So I have to subtract that. And now the power consumption is very, very dependent on the state of the display. So this display is being updated, I think, on the camera. You can see it kind of flickering. In real life, it's invisible, essentially. Uh, but that flickering does cause very slight current peaks and dips. Well, not, not that slight, actually. It's, uh, it varies by almost three milliamps, so 30 counts on my amp display. 
And the only reason that uh, this number is so low is because it is averaging over such a long period. But the averaging is not quite aligned with the refresh rate of the display. So um, that causes a slightly larger effective error here than I kind of hoped for. But close enough. Uh, and if you connect it on this side, unfortunately, I don't have anything USB-C to plug this into right now. Uh, but you do see this display only uh, changing by one digit. Yeah, I found something to plug it into. Uh, currently, my phone is charging on this via a uh, USB-C to A converter. These kinds of projects are really uh, by far the most fun projects because it is very easy to just throw everything at something to to throw in the kitchen sink, use a very large microcontroller that's very easy to get high performance on, to get like a high resolution ADC on there and a uh, very accurate shunt amplifier and just do the whole nine yards. But it is much, much harder and much more satisfying to get this like five digit display with good update rate, like uh, two and a half times per second. That's about as fast as a human can can reasonably cope. Optimize this to like a low price and still retain all that accuracy. It's so awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you can follow these projects and my other projects on Hackity now, as well as just my regular site. And I will see you next time, hopefully with a power bank update.